most beloved deities of the Hindu religion. The composer says, Rama, can you not take care of me? Can you not protect me? Nannu bro varada dayaleda, don't you have pity? Do you, have, do you not have compassion? Now, one of the most obvious features, most striking features of Carnatic music compositions is their religious orientation. Most of them, as I said, especially the Kriti, which is the premier compositional form, Kritis are always addressed, they always refer to one or the other deity in the Hindu pantheon. So the question naturally immediately arises. Um, how necessary is a religious attitude to perform or enjoy this music. If this music is uh, art music, it is classical music, then surely its reach should be beyond uh, a certain religious community. But the compositions being so obviously and explicitly um, rooted in the Hindu tradition, what of uh, people outside this religion, how do they relate to these compositions? Can a non-Hindu perform, perform Carnatic music or enjoy it? The answer to this straight away and very clearly is a yes. And we have had uh, performers from outside the Hindu fold we have had Westerners take seriously to Carnatic music and uh, in our own backyard we have uh, Muslim families like uh, the Sheikh Chinna Maulana family who for generations have been 
uh, very prominent performers of Carnatic music of the Nagaswaram, which is a traditional instrument. So, the com uh, Carnatic compositions are, are in devotion, in, in content, they are devotional. So, what is the relation between Carnatic compositions and Carnatic music and Hindu devotion? Chemmangudi Srinivas Iyer, one of the most influential, one of the most uh, venerated musicians of the previous generation, said that bhakti or devotion is important in Carnatic music but it is bhakti for the music that is what is important another great musician a living legend as he is called to Vivi subramanian he said that what is bhakti bhakti stems from love devotion stems from love and in the context of music this love is this seeking, this yearning is a yearning after mergence with the, the Shruti, mergence with the Raga, mergence with the composer, composer's mind, so that we can bring out an evocative music. That is what is Bhakti in the context of Carnatic music. Even so, it is hard to ignore that as far as the content of the compositions go, it is um, explicitly religious. So, let us in this session explore the relationship between Carnatic music and just try to understand what uh, we mean when we say that Carnatic music compositions are rooted in the rooted in bhakti. Now, this is something that we often hear and uh, it is it's, it cannot be dismissed. Compositions in Carnatic music especially the Kriti, as I said, is, is rooted in a larger ethos of a metaphysical stance, a world view that draws from various strands of this complex entity called Hinduism. Questions about human destiny, about what is this life, what are we here for, what is its purpose? the angst, the, the agony, the anxiety of our mortality and uh, every human soul seeking freedom, liberation from the limitations imposed by this mortality. These are the questions that every religion addresses and Hinduism also does it. But it, there is no single uh, answer or no single uh, world view that is offered. There are at least three strands that can be discerned in this complex um, religion. We have the, the Vedic ritualism on the one hand, which emphasizes discharge of religious duties, what is called Nitya and Naimittika karmas and many other karmas. On this worldview, uh, human life, um, the goal of human life is seen as the proper discharge of um, duties, religious duties. Human beings are seen as being under the debts, under certain debts, what are called Rina. They are indebted to the gods who give them life, who give them food, water, air and everything. They are indebted to their fathers and forefathers, Pitrurana as it is called, and they are indebted to their Acharya, the teacher. And a human being, a human being's life is properly lived when he discharges his debts to these three uh, beings. Uh, and then we have the 
um, the quiescence, uh, the Upanishadic terms which advocates meditating, withdrawing into oneself and seeking uh, the truth by withdrawing from um, worldly pursuits. Now, besides these two, there is a third very powerful strand of Hinduism which is the Bhakti strand, the Bhakti uh, way, the way of Bhakti. This um, we find in our Puranas and more joyfully in the songs of the hundreds of Bhakti poets that we have, we have had in this country from about the 5th century till about the 16th or 17th centuries, even later. So what is this Bhakti movement as it is called? The Bhakti movement originated in Tamil Nadu in the outpourings, devotional outpourings of the Aravars who sang of their love for Vishnu, followed by the, uh, the outpourings of the Shiva, dev Shiva devotees, the Tevarams and uh, soon this spread across the country and uh, we have many bhakti saints, we have the Dasakutas and the Virashevas from Karnataka, we have uh, Mirabai, Tulsidas, Surdas, Kabirdas, we have Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, many many uh, bhakti poets, all of them singing of their love for Krishna or Rama or Devi or Shiva in their regional languages. Sanskrit was set aside. They sang easily of their love just as they would sing or they would talk to their mother or father. So it's a, Bhakti is a movement with great diversity in it but one feature is certainly that it is um, the individual seeking a direct relationship with the God, with God. The Bhakti poets, all of them, have very little use for ritualism, for uh, outward religious symbols, paraphernalia. In their place an intense love for the God, intense love for Krishna or Rama and singing to them as if they were there, as if Rama or Krishna was their father. That is the essence of uh, Bhakti, the Bhakti voice. They seek the Lord on their own terms, passion, love, even defiance is seen in the poems of these bhaktas, bhakti poet, bhakti saints. It is the, it is the individual seeking the Lord which is why we, we find almost invariably that these songs have the signature of the bhakta. The bhakti poets leave their signatures in their poems what is called Ankita or Mudra. So, Mira, Mira says Mira Kahe in all her Padas. Kabir says Das Kabir or Kahet Kabir Suno Bhai Sadho. Annamacharya uses the name of his Lord as his signature Venkateshwara. Purandaradasa uses again Purandara Vithala as his Ankita, so that in all of his Padas Purandara Vithala is used. We will see Carnatic composers also use this Ankita or the Mudra and this they incorporate this signature in their compositions. 
Bhakti has no use for rituals in their formalism, nor for the quiescence and the withdrawal that the Upanishads preach. Instead, Bhakti saints sing of their tumultuous love for God. They sing to Him, they, they speak to Him, they cajole Him, they plead with Him, they even chastise Him, they even show their anger, their disappointment even sometimes sarcasm. The Bhakti movement, as it is called, has suffused the Indian ethos, the Indian mind, the Indian psyche. It has left a deep impact on, certainly on the performing arts, on the literary arts as well. Now, while uh, there were radical ideas in the Bhakti movement, they, they questioned prevailing religious mores, religious practices that emphasized outward um, expression, outward uh, symbolism. They also criticized uh, social mores and many of them explicitly uh, rejected the caste system. So, any bhakta, whether of whatever gender or caste or creed, if he or she loves the Lord, then he or she is a brother and a sister. Um, so this kind of uh, social uh, radicalism is also seen in many bhakti uh, poetry. Now where does Carnatic music stand? vis a -vis this tradition. I am going to play a composition for you. It is a Tamil composition composed by Gopala Krishna Bharati who lived in the 19th century. He was a younger contemporary of uh, the Carnatic Trinity and uh, it is believed that uh, he and Tyagaraja had a meeting and uh, there were some exchanges of musical ideas. And, um, so, um, he chronologically or in terms of his stature as a, a composer, he comes next, he comes after the Trinity certainly, but I want to play this composition of his before going on to talk about the Trinity in our next sessions because this composition very clearly is rooted in the bhakti ethos, bhakti tradition as I have outlined, outlined. the bhakti, uh, certain features of what we call bhakti sampradaya are very clearly there in this composition. Gopal Krishna Bharati's compositions are very poignant, they are uh, very nuanced compositions and uh, this uh, composition goes like this Vali Maraitirikkude Malay Poli Uru Madu Padutirikkude Pavi Parayan in the Uril Vandum even Pavam Tireno Undan Padatil Sereno Teradil Nindra Darshital Podum Koil Varamatene O Radi Vilaginal Podum Inge Nindr Utra Parka Shatriagilum Vilagadu Undan Madu. The translation is there for you to read. Let us listen to the composition and then we will discuss it.
composition is um, part of uh, a larger uh, what is called an, uh, a musical play it's it's actually katha kalakshepam it's a it's a larger work called nandanar charitram nandanar or nandan was a shiva devotee and he belonged to a very low caste who traditionally couldn't enter temples and yet he was a devotee and he yearned for a glimpse of the uh, lord at the temple in chidambaram the nataraja the 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 shiva the shivalingam at chidambaram and uh, this composition describes his his sheer frustration that i against sh many odds have come to this town of yours and yet am i to be denied darshan am i to be denied a glimpse of you this huge bull that is lying in my way the bull is of course nandi nandi is the the vahana or the the vehicle of lord shiva and uh, in every shiva temple 
it is right before the the sanctum of the Lord we have the Nandi and uh, Nandan is saying that Nandi is in the way I can't see you won't your bull move just a little so that I can get a glimpse of you so here you have clear uh, elements of the bhakti tradition the many bhakti poets were in fact from the lower castes uh, who sought direct uh, communion with the Lord and um, Nandan is yearning for his for a darshan of uh, Lord Shiva now Carnatic compositions are situated in the multi-hued uh, Hindu religious tradition and certainly bhakti is a strong presence in this uh, tradition we find recurrent metaphorical allusions to the samsara sagara the oceanic tumult of worldly existence we find uh, ideas of world weariness of seeking redemption or seeking release from a cycle of birth and death we find ideas of the Lord of God being a master puppeteer who has his own idea of play what is called Leela it's a play for him and we are all actors in this uh, play of his such ideas are all very much part of the Hindu um, metaphysical world view and these are all reflected in Carnatic compositions the idea of God as being a protector creator of course protector God as being like mother and father interestingly the idea of bridal mysticism um, where God is seen as the beloved and the devotee is the bride that is not found in Carnatic compositions um, for instance if you look at this song from the Arvars again a, a, a composition of Apasharam from Andar Vanide Varum Avvana Varku Marayavar Vail Vail Vahutta Avi Kanide Thirivadur Nari Pugundu Kadapadum Muppadum Uppa and so on the meaning of which she says Andal says Andal is the bride she says that she is Lord Ranganada's bride and she will unite with none other than him but this is bridal mysticism at its most um, passionate at its most uh, explicit she says just as the sacrificial offering that is made uh, for the gods may not be touched by a fox so also this body of mine is meant for Ranganada and no mortal can even dream of touching it and if that if there was even the merest talk of me being wedded to a mortal I will surely die now this is as I said bridal mysticism we find bridal mysticism in uh, the songs of Veera Sheva poets of Meera of Kabir and many others um, now this uh, is not found in Carnatic compositions though there is a, a teasing um, suggestion of it in this composition by Tyagaraja 
the lyrics are here cherara vadimira ramaya why don't you unite with me cherara vadimira cherara vadimira ramaya cherara vadimira ramaya cherara vadimira ravade mira cher ravade cher ravade mira cher ravade mira cher ravade ಬಗತನಾದು ಕೋರು ರೀತಿ ಪಲು ಮಾರು ವೇಡು ಕೊಳ್ಳೆ ಆಲು ಪರ ದೋಹಿ ಸೀಮ್ಸ್ ಟು ರಿಫರ್ ಟು ದಿ ಐಡಿಯಾ ಆಫ್ ಗೈಡೆನ್ಸ್ ಟು ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಕ್ವೈಟ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ದಿ ಆಂಡಾಳ್ ಪಾಶ್ರಮ್ ದಟ್ ಐ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ಡ್ ಐ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಯು ಥಿಂಕ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಹೌ ದಿ ಟೂ ಆರ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಇನ್ ಎಕ್ಸಸೈಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಯು ಟು ಸಿ ಹೌ ದ ಟೂ ಕಾಂಪೋಸಿಷನ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹೌ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಸಿಮಿಲರ್ ವಿ ಫೈನ್ ಸಮ್ radical questioning of social mores as i have said before in uh, bhakti poetry for example in this composition by basavarna of which i am showing you translation basavarna was a veera shaiva poet and he is uh, here making fun or questioning the uh, practice of offering a sacrifice as part of a religious ritual he says the sacrificial lamb brought for the festival ate up the leaves brought for the decorations not knowing a thing about the kill it only wants to fill its belly born that day to die that day but tell me did the killer survive o lord of the meeting rivers kudala sangama deva was the ankita or the signature of Basavarna, who was uh, a leading poet in the Veera Shaiva tradition. Again, Kabir says this, Sar mundate hari mile, to har koi le mudai, Bar bar ke mundate, bheed na bai kunt jai. So this, um, again this religious practice of shaving the head, what does it achieve? If by shaving your head you will find your god then how about the sheep surely a sheep should have found where kunt the lord long before anybody else now this sort of radical questioning we don't find in uh, carnatic compositions though these are very much part of the bhakti tradition as bhakti movement the bhakti poetry as uh, we know it so carnatic composers draw from the bhakti tradition and other aspects of other um, strands of the hindu religion to varying degrees if we speak of the carnatic trinity tyagaraja muthu swami dikshudar and shama shastri tyagaraja is perhaps closest to the bhakti movement as i have discussed just a little while ago um he sings to his rama in various moods and we will see this later in our next session we will take up tyagaraja 
in some detail. Shama Shastri from the literary point of view his lyrics are very simple bare almost they seem to draw from a set of stock phrases and uh, the sentiments expressed are very simple very straightforward the music is that much more sophisticated the lyrics are kept to the bare minimum but in very simple lyrics but the music scales great heights now muthuswami dikshidar is perhaps the farthest from the bhakti tradition he was no doubt a devout person and uh, but not his compositions do not belong in the uh, bhakti tradition there is uh, a complete absence of uh, passion of, of expression of passion dikshidar's compositions are uh, rooted more in the abstract philosophical realms of advaita and uh, shri vidya worship both of which are esoteric and deeply spiritual rather than passionately devotional there is a um, little expression of passion and love that is the whole mark of bhakti poetry his compositions have a an aloof grandeur about them the trinity and other composers the trinity especially are not the trinity because of the devotional content uh, in their uh, compositions because of their affiliations with the hindu religion uh these were great musical minds and uh, the coming together of uh, music with um strong lyrics strong sahitya uh that is what has given them the stature of being the trinity of carnatic music now i will end the session with this link to a composition a grand composition by shama shastri this is in the raga bhairavi i need this is not a kriti it is called a swarajati you can try and see what the structure of the composition is by listening to it um here as i said it is in the raga raga bhairavi bhairavi is one of the very old ragas and it's an immensely it's a rakti raga it is it can evoke so many notes and it lends itself to so much elaboration and and so such evocative music and this composition is a is by it it brings out bhairavi very powerfully the composition is in praise of the composition is addressed to kamakshi devi kamakshi the goddess kamakshi of kanchipuram ah Shri Om 
composition is as i said addressed to kamakshi kanchi kamakshi kamakshi of kanchipuram the nayika of this composition the heroine of this piece in my opinion is bhairavi kamakshi is of course there she is the source of everything but the heroine of this piece is raga bhairavi and that in my opinion is and that in the opinion not just of me of but of most carnatic uh, carnatic performers is where bhakti and religion stands these are the carnatic music 